Hallo, guten Morgen, hereinspaziert. Uh, herzlich willkommen auf der Maker Stage. I'm going to switch to English right now, as we have a change in the a little uh, change in the program. Uh, our speaker um, Lena could not be with us today, but Tenaya Hurst is going to do the presentation about Allnet, and um, we are really, really curious to hear a bit more from the yeah worldwide uh, <laughs> scene of uh, fabrication. And yeah, it's your stage, please. Uh, we are very thank curious. You. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. And thank you all for being here. Uh, you will hear, I do have a little bit of a lost voice, but thank you for the microphone. That helps out. Uh, I often lose my voice at Maker Fairs from talking to so many amazing people. But help me, because I'm living in Italy now too, detail. The cigarette smoke is why I have lost my voice. So please don't smoke, smoking's lame. <laughs> so please enjoy. I do have slides. I've tried to change the titles in German so as to help in understanding, but Europe is more good at languages than Americans. So most Americans know Spanish and English, but I know you all know many languages. So the worldwide scene of fabrication, very exciting. So you can see my name is Tanaya. That is a name from Yosemite, Yosemite in the United States. And uh, I have a lot of different logos up here. Uh, this is my second year at Make Munich and I'm attending with Allnet and Arduino. And I will show you some exciting things about that. I also, being a maker, I wanted to have my own company too and I call it Rogue Making. And awesome. And thank you guys for joining. If you want to pull your balloon a little down, we're filming for everyone in the world to see later. <laughs> so this will go if I make it. There we go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. <laughs> so here I was from last year at the Make Munich. We had the lovely bricks, and of course, we brought our CEO of Arduino, one of our engineers, and we had a great time. If you were there, you remember the snow was crazy, <laughs> but I was there. And since then, we have opened a store in Berlin. So I know it's not Munich, Munich, but the first Arduino store in the world is in Germany. So how amazing is that? And I will be there, and as I have been pretty often, to teach workshops. And when we make a new kit, we try it out for the first time in Germany, in Berlin. So for June Maker Fair, I will have workshops there before. And you can see I brought my little dachshund, Arduini, I call him. <laughs> so at the Berlin store, uh, we're on Danziger Strasse, you can find us. I love East Berlin. I happen to have lived in Berlin 2005, 2006. So then I worked for Arduino. I was like, wow, I get to go back to Berlin. And this is our workshop space. So it is a store, but we have room to teach. That's the whole goal. And how amazing, again, on the right, there's our CEO. He's the greatest guy. He's teaching a student about Arduino. Like, what CEO do you know who does that? He's amazing. So, before I was a maker, as we all have a story before we were makers, uh, I have a degree from Indiana University. I am from California, but the program at Indiana was exciting. And I went there for theater, but then I also am passionate about science, so I have a geology and an anthropology degree. It's kind of weird. This is not normal, even in America. <laughs> but I think now, 15 years later, can't believe it, uh, I think it is more popular to have degrees in very weird subjects. Uh, but you can already see I was running all over the campus. <laughs> Theater building, geology building, anthropology. They were like, not too happy, but I made it happen. And I also achieved something called Phi Beta Kappa. So I am, I, I'm not just an actress. <laughs> so then I had some bad jobs like we all do. And then I found a great job at the Tech Museum. 
So if you're ever in the San Francisco Bay Area, Bay Area excuse me, I'm so sorry. Um, again, sorry for those of us just joining us. I lost my voice a little. So in the Bay Area in San Jose, there's the Tech Museum of Innovation. There's also the Computer History Museum. Little different, they're both great. So come down and join us, it's the big orange building. And I was teaching chemistry, physics, geology, and electricity. One day, that day, they said, hey, Tanaya, come demonstrate a wearable tech lab coat with an Arduino in the pocket. And I said, what's an Arduino? Because <laughs> I didn't know what it was. So I demoed this coat, and it plays music if you touch the conductive fabric pads. So it was such a cool project. I said, I've got to find out more about this. So like many of us, my first kit was the Arduino starter kit. And I didn't go through it in one day. I did the light blinking, and then I waited for like a week, really thought about it. You know, it took me some time. Kids rush through it. They're like, oh, I got to try all the projects right now. So it was really a cool, like, revelation, like a personal maker revelation in my own life. It was wonderful. <laughs> so... Then I learned Arduino could be wearable, obviously, this coat from the first day. So I said, okay, I breadboard, I wear light bulbs, and then this is who I am now. <laughs> so I am passionate about all Arduino projects, but I'm into the glamour. I like to wear lights. So whatever you're passionate about, you can do projects in it. <laughs> so where it really started, and you'll see now I have these little numbers of like moments I want to share with you from how I got into the maker world. So my first event ever, I went to the maker fair with the Tech Museum of San Jose. And I went up to Federico's table, which is a combo dog hunter Arduino table at the time. And I said, the truth, I just learned what an Arduino is. It's hardware that controls light, sound, and motion. And he's like, of course it is. And I said, I'm a teacher. I would love to help. And he immediately said, please work for Dog Hunter Arduino, and let's do something. So he changed my life. I work for Dog Hunter Arduino now. It's been the best, best thing ever. <laughs> so I wanted to share with you also in the presentation some of our newest hard hardware so sorry, hardware, I could get it. Um, and I am making kits for the new hardware so that intermediate students can learn the more difficult, but not really, IoT, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. So the Primo board has a lot of features, but you can see we're, we have the ARM Cortex and a new microcontroller from ST. So you all know ST, they're an Italian-French company. So we have STM32, we have the Wi-Fi ESP chip, maybe some of you use that on its own as well. And then we have Nordic Bluetooth. So this board is like what we would have made as Uno 10 years ago if we had all these options. But what's also exciting is there's infrared, so you can do remote control projects. And there's an NFC, which is this cool connectivity of like, kind of like RFID with like tapping a unit. And then we have, of course, like a buzzer. You know, we've added other sensors, other components, so sorry, to the board. So you don't need to breadboard necessarily. There's enough things to control on this board. And why I'm excited about Primo is we have another form factor. So you might not have seen yet, but my earrings are an Arduino. <laughs> so we make Arduinos that are big, we make them into small modules. So if you want to make a product, then you put this core or this board in your product. So I know it's a little squished, uh, but this coin cell battery is, I tried to make it the size, so it's, it's on the back of the core, so cool, right? Arduinos are 3.3 volts now, oh my gosh. So the core has all those features, 
but we also have motion and environmental sensors. So the core, you can solder other components, but there's a three-axis magnetometer, three-axis accelerometer, humidity, and temperature. So for example, I am also a rock climber, because <laughs> I'm a geologist, I love rocks, so I want to make a project with the core to track how upside down I can climb and make a graph of what I've just climbed with the height, whatever. Um, in the gym, it's hotter at the ceiling, so I could track that with the temperature sensor. So I am so excited. So this is coming to the market very soon. The first place it will be is the Berlin store. So if you're like, when is this available? It will be there as soon as possible. <laughs> Italians, you know, they need some time. So this stuff is exciting to some of you out there, the block diagram, but this is the comparison of the Primo and the Core. So we can see some similarities. There are a few more functions on the main Primo board, but we also offer some of these. I can relate it to like a bagel, right? So the Primo Core is the center, the donut hole, whatever, and then a pad. If you've heard of lily pad, we don't make that. Spark Fun in the US makes lily pad. But finally, we are going to make Primo Core with a pad. I will be making a pad called Tanaya Pad, but we have a simple, uh, basic one called Alice Pad from another designer at Arduino. These names, I know the Arduino family is all these silly names, but we're trying to give people options. So this is the block diagrams. But I will share some more stories with you all about the maker world now. So this story is about number two, an important moment. So making is about failure, right? <laughs> so in my early days, I was offered a fashion show and a workshop. So this, if this has happened to any of you out there, I just want to relay this story, but this workshop, right? The people approached me and they said, Tanaya, you will sell 300 kits. <laughs> Sorry, <coughs> that word kits is hard. So you will sell to children, you know, there'll be 300 kids at this event. They will all buy like a little necklace or something to sew into their clothes, whatever. So I said, wow. So I bought... 300 of everything I needed, whatever. If I had just asked, pay me for 150, you know, then the event organizer would have said, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I hope you will sell 300 kids. So I invested all my money. We did a fashion show. No one came, the workshop, no one came. I thought it was a failure. Meanwhile, and I'm, this is the truth, I'm just telling you guys the truth, I had a heartbreak. I had a boyfriend who's like, you're buying 300 kits, you're doing this fashion show, you're too busy, bye. And I said, come on. So meanwhile, there was an article from one person who came to the fashion show. They wrote it about me. I was like, thank you. Just a university paper, but I was like, thank you. So, because I thought I'd failed in, in both situations, but I got an article. One very important person read that article, and I got an article in Make Magazine by Dale Doherty. <laughs> so, sometimes the failures lead to good things, you know, in life, in making. After this article, it's not like I'm world famous yet or anything, but... I have been able to continue to do fashion shows that have been more successful, push me, me as an artist, and it's exciting. So some of these are from uh, Fashion Week in New York and in Silicon Valley, and maybe someday I will do fashion shows in Europe. So successes can come out of it. So when I'm traveling, sometimes I have to turn my hotel into a maker space. And I made a new project, and I have it with me at my booth, with the all-net booth, you can come see. But in the hotel, you can solder, you can bring all your materials. Just 
maybe they don't need to know about your soldering. <laughs> so here's me the night before New York Maker Fair. <laughs> So I spread it all out. The table wasn't enough. And I was making something with another new Arduino board. Ooh. It's called the Star Oto. <laughs> so again, where does eight come from? We have Primo, Due, Trey is a project that we don't have. Eight, we just came up with it. We love eight, great. This board has graphics, camera, audio, microphone. So. If you know the Arduino Mega, this is in that same form factor, but it has all these new capabilities. It also comes with a touch screen. So on my dress, I made a touch screen so you can control the dress. And if you remember my dachshund project, because I love dachshunds, I made my dress just so I could match my dog project. <laughs> So again, for those joining us, if you're passionate about something, you add Arduino to your passion. <laughs> I love wiener dogs and fashion. I make wiener dogs and fashion with Arduino. It's very literal. <laughs> and this is another thing I talk about a lot. I don't know if it's a thing in Germany. Um, there are generations, right? So there's Gen X, there's Millennial. Okay, so um, according to a documentary I saw, the cusp, the break, is 1981. <laughs> so I'm born in 83. I'm kind of on the border. So for Generation X, what I'm leading to is they don't understand social media. I'm sort of on the border. I barely understand it. But I'm, I am proud. I posted a video on Instagram so sorry again, guys. Um, but I got over 30,000 views the last time I checked because I am partially Gen X. I don't check every day how many views. But I'm very proud that my dress, I was able to share remotely with 30,000 people. It's amazing. <laughs> so my dress, I got to take to Nuremberg. Or is it Nuremberg? You Germans in your multiple city names. So funny. But at Embedded World, they can't handle me <laughs> with this dress. This is a very serious event with no men. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, no women, no redheads, and no girls wearing lights. So I stood out a bit at the event, but it was very fun. And I was there with ST to show my, my ST Arduino dress, Star Oto dress. <laughs> so I had fun. So getting back to this idea, if you're new to Arduino or this hardware thing, like why are there so many? Well, this, I love this picture, this is Lady Gaga. She needs a chair, right? So that's why we have so many. I need to do that photo shoot, but wearing a few more lights. <laughs> but the idea here is in Arduino, we serve the kids. We want to teach kids about electronics so they are passionate about science, physics. They want to learn coding. Great. But for the big kids, we want to make a product. We don't need a full-size Arduino in our products. So again, we make many boards in different form factors. So this is like a pre-certified Wi-Fi board. People have told me they're able to go to market much faster because we've taken care of some of that, you know, um, proprietary hardware is what we call it. So pretty exciting. You can have different options and make your product. And we're getting there. More and more pictures for everyone to check out. Part of my maker journey that I cherish the most is teaching kids I love that Make Munich has the workshops available. It is so special to see these millennials, these young kids, just have so much confidence and want to try something out, something out. And I teach boys how to sew. I teach girls how to make robots. It's very gender neutral. And uh, of course, when they come visit me at, ma at Maker Fairs, it's so sweet. They're like, there's my teacher. So if any of you have the opportunity to teach, it is so rewarding. 
And, excuse me, speaking back to, fail, to failure, I learned so much from watching 30 kids fail. If you're just failing alone in your room, you're alone. You don't know. You have uncertainty. But if everyone's failing, everyone can learn from each other. So it's really special. And you can see this one kid. He's so funny. So I have this very fun product. They are called the LED shades. So I will get these on for you. And you can see they are way too much fun. And I can program them. Obviously, I want this product to become IoT so I could change it on my phone. But every class I teach, kids are so inspired. <laughs> so you can see this, this student brought in a sleeping mask. <laughs> And he put lights on the sleeping mask. So funny to me. But uh, they are pretty fabulous. So if, if you do want some, these are called Mace Tech. And this is an example of a product that someone made on a breadboard. And then they said, let's, let's make this and share it with everybody. So you are welcome to come take a selfie, millennials or Gen X, uh, at my booth. Because <laughs> they are that fabulous. More photo. There you go. <laughs> so they are fun. <clears throat> and we're almost there. Speaking of fun with LEDs, another moment that I'm very proud about is I went to a hackathon, and I said to this guy who has a beard, Bart, I said, you should make a wearable for your beard. <laughs> so he made this beard thing. <laughs> Beardables, we tweeted about it. Millennial. <laughs> so later, this guy in New York made a beardable. He is wearing it, but you can't really see it. It was daytime. But he made that by seeing my tweet. So you can affect the maker world by sharing your projects through Twitter. Who knew? Instagram, Twitter, whatever. So, beardables worldwide. <laughs> And another thing that I like to do in wearing these lights is make jewelry. So another little thing to impart, I wear this stuff a lot. People sometimes don't want me to wear it. Um, a very good feedback, my best friend said, hey Tanaya, I stare at a computer screen all day. Can you take off your lights? Because it's just too distracting. So if you're out for a romantic date or, you know, one-on-one -on -one with someone, you don't need your lights. But if you're at a party where you're dancing, you're changing direction, whatever, that's the venue to wear it. Um, if you're going to see a performance, a performance that you're, you're not in, turn off your lights because obviously, um, you don't want to be accused of stealing focus. <laughs> but I love this project because similar to what um, Anouk was doing with the 3D printed cat ears, I teach kids how to solder this unit. It's called a blipless. And then we can 3D print or laser cut acrylic these cool shapes. And it's really fun. And it's using an AT tiny so sorry, AT Tiny 85, uh, just like uh, a lot of other people just make a little board like that. <laughs> and we're almost there. And so, again, normally I have a much more lovely voice. Uh, I have three music videos about making. And so you are welcome to share these uh, with kids or adults too. And I just sing songs about soldering and robots and jewelry and wearable tech and Arduino, and uh, they are pretty, pretty darn fun. So I might have a couple more I will be making soon, but my main goal is, and this is just my last announcement, then we can have any questions. My, my main goal with Arduino right now is I cannot teach everywhere. Even when I have a good voice, I can't fly all over the world. So I am making a training program it's called Arduino Certified Experts. And I will be making a book, a kit, videos, and a PowerPoint. So those four things a teacher could have 
and then be able to be trained and teach. So it's a good pyramid scheme for me to be able to help people have confidence because Gen X are the teachers and they're like, oh my gosh, this is so complicated. So I'm going to make it easy. So a teacher just that morning, so sorry, that morning, get your coffee, don't stress, open up my video, press play, open up my PowerPoint, press play, and help the kids learn it. So that is my main goal. And if we have a few more moments, I'd be happy to answer some questions. Oh, cool. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks to, uh, to you, Tanaya. That was really, really interesting. And so much. I, I uh, made a notice to ask the first question, but you just mm. answered it. My question was, what is your main aim, your main goal? You just say it. Teach people and to, like, to enjoy electronics also in every way. Exactly. But I would like to give the, the questions to the audience. Is there any question? We could mm. also translate it if it's just in... Of course. <laughs> No question. So the world of fashion is still a woman's world, right? And the, all the men here have no questions. <laughs> <laughs> I am intimidating. I would like, I would like to know, um, but you personally, would you say you are more in the world of, the, of fashion or you are more in the world of makers? What is your Ooh. main scene? That is a great question. I have completely ambushed the world of fashion because they want my lights. So... I, these fashion shows I participate in, you know, I have full respect for actual designers. They have a real collection. And then I show up with all these lights. So I am being welcomed to that world for the novelty of wearable tech. But I would say I'm mostly a general maker. And all this, this big scene about wearable electronics, how about that? You... You are asked to do that or to make corporations? Well, uh, there are many students, many uh, startups that want to make wearables. And of course, in other categories like healthcare, um, you know, uh, uh, asset tracking. Um, I think wearable is just really mobile. So when I teach kids, making a breadboard project is awesome. It's on a table, it's great. But designing for a 360 design and where is your battery and, and how do the elbows move if there's a wire on the battery and like that's really great for kids to become designers, I think. Okay. Any other questions right now? Yes, there? Mm. So actually these are cool glasses you have there, but actually you're blind when you wear them. Oh. So that is a good thing to, to say. And I know, again, I'm so funny, gener uh, my generation references. But if Gen X remembers, these are called shutter shades from the 80s. <laughs> so the shutter shades, they're only 50% blocking you. But I also say the party is forward. <laughs> so when I wear them, it's just persistence of vision. Like right now, I just see... Right now, I just see black lines, but I just look past it. But all the lights are forward, um, so they do not obstruct my vision. But if they're too bright, I can adjust the brightness on my buttons on the side. So you're just 50% blind, so exactly. that's good. <laughs> okay, so Tanaya, thank you very much for this sure. presentation. Um, I think you can all... What is the number of your uh, stand there? Stand three. Stand three. So... <laughs> Um, you can uh, talk to Tanaya afterwards. Yes. And I'm going to uh, change the techniques now sure. and to yes. change Thank to German you, now. Thank you, Munich. Thank you so much. You are amazing makers in Munich. Seriously, I'm so impressed every time I come to Germany specifically. It's amazing. Thank you so, so much. <laughs>